When I was a kid, I had very distinct memories of wandering around an old thrift store and stumbling upon a novel called White Shark by Peter Benchley. Now Jaws is my favorite movie of all time, so you bet your ass I bought it. Now I'll never forget how when you opened the cover you got this stunning full art page of someone just being sucked down into a massive whirlpool. The kind of horrors this image evoked in my brain, it was, it was crazy. Did I ever actually read the book though? No, but I mean still, it was cool, and then I just kind of forgot about it over time. Only to come to realize that in 1998, there was a whole ass two-part miniseries based on this book that I had no idea existed until you guys started mentioning it in the comments when I was asking for aquatic horror recommendations. And what are the chances, realistically, that it manages to live up to that incredible cover art? Cause I bet it won't. So on some island, there's a secret military base doing experiments on crossbreeding dolphins and great whites. Why? Good old American murder, probably. Let these hybrids loose and the rice paddies in Nam and the BC won't know what hit them. If only we had them a year and a half ago on Delta Patrol, I'd still have my two best friends in the whole world. Have we blown your mind, sir? And yes, that is in fact a pre-Breaking Bad John Carlo Esposito. And yes, he is indeed one of the best parts of this entire movie, but not for the reason that you're probably thinking. Turns out they have a side project that starts attacking the dolphin shark things, so John Carlo is tasked with killing it, but instead, he traps it in a cage and drops it into the middle of the ocean. I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! Jump ahead to the present day, and now we have Craig T. Nelson running around playing scientist for Great Whites. Well, you boys look like a healthy lot. Any of your friends or relatives die of cancer yet? Joined by his ex-wife, I think. I think it's supposed to be his ex-wife. Played by Kim Cattrall and their kid. And if you think Craig and Kim's relationship fell apart because they were too focused on their work, and they're gonna bicker about that shit constantly, ding ding ding! It's so cliche that why wouldn't it be in this? And that brings us balls deep into the biggest issue that I have with Creature, and it's that it does not in any way warrant or earn its ungodly three hour runtime. Shit man, four hours if you include the commercials during its television broadcast, and I'd say 95% of this movie is spent with the human characters while they just investigate things and talk science babble, and sure, Craig and Kim are fine in their roles, bless them they try, but the kid riding rollerblades because it was the 90s trying to get his fuck on, I, I can't even begin to fully articulate how little I give a shit about this dude. However, there is one character who stands out among the rest, and it puts his role as Gus Fring to absolute shame. So apparently 25 years later, yeah, the, all that shit from the past, that was 25 years ago in this movie's timeline, John Carlo went insane, he didn't age at all, and is now called Werewolf. And his unhinged performance is one of the saving graces of the movie because it's just so goddamn ridiculous. The other saving grace is Stan Winston. Stan doesn't need any introduction. My man's was basically the modern day Ray Harryhausen. And the creature in this movie is a bipedal street shark, which, in the wrong hands, could be one of the dumbest things ever put to film. But when you give that shit to Stan Winston, even on a budget as low as a random TV movie, you end up with this. And it's awesome. And as far as I'm concerned, the fact that this monster only appears on screen for maybe 10 minutes total out of a goddamn three hour movie's runtime equates to a war crime. And it's not even just the creature either. There's like a scene where Craig's character dives into the water to free a great white from a fishing line. And I legit had to go back and rewatch the scene just to confirm that this wasn't actually a real shark. That's jaw droppingly realistic. That's like on the same level as the animatronic sharks from Deep Blue Sea. And this came out a year earlier with a fraction of the budget. Stan Winston truly just was a class all his own. I'll give Creature a 3 out of 5. Could have easily been way closer to a 5, but I just really wish this had been a standard movie. If this had just been like a solid 90 minute theatrical film, it could have been up there with some of the more memorable monster movies from the 90s. But great practical effects cannot save it from a bloated runtime. It's just more padding than monster. Really, if you just cut out the filler and like turn this into a street shark origin story, hell yeah, it's sign me right up. 